Shalom, Ka Hala, Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha Raka Quidash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles, and elders of the Great Millstone. Also, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. We have received comfort in a comfortless generation. And to receive comfort begins in the mind. That's why the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 tells us, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. So as we see, it starts in the mind. The scripture tells us, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it begins with the renewing of your mind. That's where the comfort begins in your mind. And we have a renewal of mind. That's why we have been comforted in a comfortless generation. Let's look at this word. Conformed. In the Strong's G, the pronunciation. Strong's G, 4964. Sus Suschematizo. It says, to conform one's self, i.e., one's mind and character, to another's pattern fashion one's self according to. So the cleansing process that we are going through has begun in our minds. All right. The scripture tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter five and verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So the word has entered in, all right, or the spirit of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, has entered in and washed us from the filth of this world, all right, has cleansed our minds, has what brainwashed us, all right? Now, that comfort that we have received all begins in the mind also, all right? The scripture tells us in the book of St. John, chapter 14, and verse 26. It says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So our prayer minds have been stirred up by the way of remembrance, which is mercy from the Most High. All right. And that's by the washing of the word. And the comforter has came in by the washing of the word. All right. And we have been comforted in a comfortless generation. And that comforting spirit is the spirit of Yahweh Shai which is the spirit of prophecy. And once you know somewhat of what's going to happen in the future, in the present state, you are in a comfort, a state of comfort, should I say. Let's look up the word comforter, the pronunciation in the Strong's G. Strong's G, 3875. Parakletas. Parakletas. It says, summoned, called to one's side, called to one's aid. It says, of the Holy Spirit destined to take the place of Hamashiach with the apostles after his ascension to the Father, to lead them to a deeper knowledge of the gospel truth and give them divine strength needed 
to enable them to undergo trials and persecutions on the behalf of the divine kingdom. All right, so when we're going through our hell here in this kingdom, here in America, in our minds, we have been what? Comforted because we know, all right, through knowledge why we're going through this hell. And we know that the hell that we're going through is not going to last forever. We know the outcome of this hell. And that gives us comfort. All right. That's that deeper understanding of the gospel truth and has given us um, power. And one of those powers is patience, which is your capability to suffer. OK, your capability to endure. The scripture speaks about enduring and St. Matthew 24. And. 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Here's the word endure, the pronunciation in the Strong's G. Strong's G, 5278. Hupamano. Hupamano. It says to remain, and that goes back to having patience. It says to persevere under misfortunes and trials to hold fast to one's faith in Hamashiach. See that? And you're able to do that by having a spirit that is a comfortable spirit, all right, or being comforted in your own spirit or in your own mind. And that comes by the comforter. And those that have received the truth, we have received comfort, okay? That's why the scripture tells us in Isaiah 33, in verse 6, it says, And wisdom and knowledge, which begins in your spirit or in your mind, shall be the stability that's going to be the way that you're going to stand of thy times. And the times that are coming up are what? The times of Jacob's trouble, pursuant to Jeremiah 30 and 7. And in those times, we're going to withdraw from our spiritual bank account, all right? Which is the bank account that we're storing up right now. That's why the scripture says, store up your treasures in heaven and not upon earth. And we that are, have invested upon this mission, putting our hand to the plow, all right, preaching the coming of a righteous kingdom, warning the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, that's a form of us storing up our treasures in heaven, building up that spiritual bank account so in that day, we'll be able to stand. We are being... Um, schooled with the supreme wisdom and knowledge right now to be able to stand in those times. That's being comforted in your mind. It says, and strength of salvation. So the things that we're learning right now is going to be the strength of our salvation in those times. It says, the fear of the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, is his treasure. So we're exploring our fear of Yahweh Yahweh Shai right now, which is doing what is told of us. Okay, showing um, Yahweh Shai that we love him by what? Feeding the sheep, feeding the lamb. That's our fear. Okay, and in that time when everything get ramped all the way up and all hell has broken loose, that's going to be our treasure because we were showing forth our fear right now. That's going to be our treasure. That's how we're going to withdraw from that spiritual bank account. But that begins with you being comforted in your mind right now, and that's through supreme wisdom and knowledge that we're gaining right now in order for us to be able to stand in that day. All right. And that's a comforting thing. Knowing that we're being equipped with the correct things right now to be able to stand in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. The scripture tells us in Isaiah 65 and Verse 12, it says, Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, ye did not answer. See, the Most High, through Yahweh Shai, have called, and we have answering. Meaning we have came, all right, to the good graces, Lord willing. We have came to the altar to make ourselves living sacrifices. We have put our hands to the plow to try to please our powers. Two-thirds have not. It says, When I spake, ye did not hear but did evil 
before mine eyes and did choose that wherein I delighted not. You know, following after these other powers. Once the true powers have been presented unto you, still being conformed to this world. Verse 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, behold, my servants shall eat. In that time, those that loathe the Lord's law while they yet had liberty, they're not going to eat. But the servants, those that have submitted unto the will of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, the scripture says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Why? Because you shun the ways. You shun the, the good graces of the Most High. So you're going to be hungry in that day of famine. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Yeah, you're going to be thirsty in that day of famine. It says, Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. So we're going to be rejoicing, Lord willing, we are part of that number in that day. But those that uh, shun the way of salvation, they're going to be ashamed in that day. That's why the scripture tells us in St. John, chapter 18, St. John 3 and 18. It says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. So we have the gift of faith, which gives us the capability to believe upon him. And that him is our only savior, which is Yahweh Shai. So we're not condemned. It says, But he that believeth not, those that don't have faith, is condemned already. All right, because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of the most high. And those are not comforted in their spirit. Those that have not received faith. All right. They're a part of that comfortless generation. But we having faith. All right. We have comfort and we know that a savior is the only way to deliver us. The only thing we have to do, Lord willing, is endure unto that time. All right. Endure within this truth. All right, believe in this truth that it's going to be a protective hedge that's going to shield us from the outside danger. Believe that our Lord and Savior, all right, is going to deliver us from the total destruction that's coming upon the soils of America. See that? That's what faith is going to get us. Psalms 91 and verse 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place, which is this truth, of the Most High, of the Most High, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, shall abide, shall tarry, or lodge under the shadow of the Almighty. And when you go into that word shadow, it means uh, shadow, shade of protection. So we're going to have a protective hedge round about us if we continue in the faith. All right. And that's comfort. The scripture tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, Wherefore, well, comfort one another with these words. So those that have received this truth, those that can understand, all right, those that have ears to hear and eyes to see, this is our comfort, knowing that we have a place of refuge and we have a way out, Lord willing, if we continue unto the end. But those that do not understand this truth and have not received this truth, they are a part of the comfortless generation. And that comfort starts in your brain or in your spirit. So, Lord willing, I pray that this made sense and that this was out of fine. Shalom, DTA.